And when we press G, we get the screen settings, we get the full screen and vSync options. So we can turn the full screen on and vSync, which will sync the frames to the refresh rate of our monitor. Hey there, I'm your host, Lesoe, and in today's video, we will create the full screen and vSync options. So that said, let's begin. Let's start by going to the content drawer. And in here, we want to create a new folder, which will be our UI folder. And let's open that up. Inside, let's go to user interface, and we want to create a new widget for our menu. So let's call it WD underscore settings menu. Let's save that. Let's go back a folder into our third person and input actions. And in here, we want to create a toggle key to open up that menu. So let's right click, go into input, input action. We'll call it IA for input action underscore toggle settings, toggle menu, whichever you prefer. Let's save it, go back a folder into our IMC underscore default. And in here on mappings, we want to assign the key. So click plus, select IA underscore toggle settings or whatever you called it. Click on the drop down and the key we'll select will be G. So once you're done, compile and exit. Next, we want to go to the third person folder, the blueprints. And in here, we want to right click with the blueprint class to create a player controller. We'll call it BP for blueprint underscore PC player controller underscore main. Let's save that and open it up. Once inside, we want to go ahead and create a new function called toggle settings menu. Now inside here, we want to drag out and do create widget. And the widget in question is going to be the settings menu widget we just made. We want to promote this to a variable save it as a reference. So WB for widget blueprint underscore settings menu. And we'll add it to the screen by doing add to viewport. Now with that said, we want to get our reference first and do right click to convert to a validated get. So it'll check it if it exists or not. If it exists, we want to remove it from the screen and clear it. And if it doesn't, we just want to create it. So if it's not valid, we'll create it. But if it does, we'll do remove from parent, like so. And we also want to clear it, otherwise this value will always exist. So setting it to blank again. With that said, um, we also want to show and hide our mouse. So let's go to functions, create a new function called show mouse and another one called hide mouse. So in show mouse, let's open that, double click, we'll do get player controller and we'll do set show mouse cursor turn this on and we want to add it or set the input uh, game mode so game and ui game and ui will allow you to be in the ui and still move around double click and select everything press q to align the widget in focus we can give it but well, i'll leave it blank there in hide mouse we want to do fairly similar thing, get player controller. Then we'll do a set show mouse cursor, leaving this blank. And just before we actually do that, we want to do a is valid because sometimes when you rather every time when you exit the game, it's going to destroy the player controller and it won't be valid. So you'll get an error. So if it's valid, We'll do set your mouse cursor to be blank. Make sure you connect this. And at the very end, we'll do a set input game only. So set input game only. Like so. And again, just double click to align everything and press Q. Compile and save. Now we can close two of these functions. Go back to our toggle settings menu. And when we create it, we want to show the mouse. And when we destroy it, we want to hide it. Now, all that's left is to call our toggle settings function. So let's close it down. And in the event graph, previously we have made a input action IA underscore toggle settings. So let's click on the drop down and on started, we have toggle settings menu like so. 
Now to test this, we first need to assign the player controller to our character. So to do that, we'll compile and save everything in here. Press X to exit. On the right hand side, we want to go to world settings. Now, if you don't have this, go to settings and click on world settings. Next, you should see the game mode. So we'll click on the drop down. We can see the person, the third person character and the player controller. So let's select our own. Like so save it. And when we go to hit play, we should be able to press G, see the mouse on the screen, press G again and make it disappear. Next, we'll go ahead and create the button for our UI. So let's go to the content drawer. Go I, let's right click, go to user interface to create a new widget. And let's call it WB underscore button. And let's open that up. Inside in the designer, we want to grab our button, drop it in here, and also a text. Click on the button, select the name to be just button, and the background color will do zero. And for the text, we want to make it variable so that we can edit it in the event graph, and we'll do txt for text underscore text. And that should be okay for now. Let's compile and save, and let's head to the event graph. Inside here, we'll go to the functions tab, create a new function called set text color. And in here, we'll grab our text and do set color and opacity. Drag out from your blue pin and do make slate color and the specified color drag to your function. And it should create an input for you, just like so. And let's compile and save. Now let's go ahead and create another function called set text settings. And all we want to do in here is again just grab our text and do set text. Last one at the bottom. The text to drag out again to your function. Create an input. Whoops. And just like that, compile and save. Next, let's go ahead and create another function for updating the button. So we'll call it update button status. And just like so, um, in here we want to set the text color, like so. From our specified color, we want to do select color, like so. Click your boolean, drag it in here, and we can rename it to is active. So if it's active, if true, let's make it a yellowish color, something like that. And if it's not active, we'll make it like slightly, or let's just make it slightly gray. And hit OK. Compile and save. Back inside of the event graph on your pre-construct, let's get rid of those two guys. We want to set the text settings like so, promoting the in-text to a variable, calling it uh, default text and making it instance editable for editing it um, in the editor. So compile and save. And we want to then grab the update button status. So similar thing is active, we'll promote it to a variable. And this just allows, it to, allows us to edit it per button, instance editable. Next, let's go ahead and click on the button, do unclicked. And in here, we want to create an event dispatcher. So we'll do on button click. And this will just give us an option in the next menu to call a function when the button's hit. So we'll do call that. And at the very end, if you'd like, we can do a play sound 2D. So we know we click the button. And just like so, we can compile and save. Next, let's go ahead and open up our settings menu. So settings menu here, and we'll start by adding a canvas panel. And on top of that, we'll do a border. And when we go to the anchors tab, so let's click on the border, anchors, while holding down control and shift, press anything in here and it'll snap. So let's do middle, snap. For size X, let's do something like 700, and size Y, we'll do like, 500, something like this. For the brush color, I want to make it black. 
and opacity something like 0.6. This will do for us. And with that said, we'll then do a vertical box like so into our border. Adding will do zero. And now we'll divide our screen. So at the very top, I want a text saying settings. So we'll grab a text, drag it in like so. Let's make it center. And we'll do padding of, let's say, 20. The font itself, we can do something like 48. And the name will do screen settings. Let's actually make the border slightly larger. So maybe like a thousand should do. That's nice. And the very next thing we want to do is let's grab a horizontal box and add it to our vertical box here. So it'll be at the bottom. We can do fill. And in here, we want to divide the screen yet to two sections. So let's grab a vertical box, drag it to our horizontal box, control C and control V. Select both vertical boxes and do fill. Let's click on the left box and set the value of fill to like 0 0.7, 0 0.6 even. And with that, grab some texts and drag it inside the vertical box. Control C, Control V. Select both. We'll do a fill. We can do padding of 20. Maybe no fill. Maybe something like that. And for these values, what we can do is click on that, do full screen like so. And here we'll do the sync. Next, we want to fill this vertical box. So for that, we'll grab a horizontal box. Oops, horizontal box. Drag it in. And let's do what was the padding on this? 20. So we'll do the same here, adding 20, and let's fill it with our button that we made. So button, wb underscore button. And we want two of these, Just like so. Click on the first one, we'll call it full screen underscore on. And for the default text, those are the two options we made, is active and default text, we'll do on. And we can see how it would look if it's active. And for the next button, we'll do full screen underscore off. And it'll be off. Just like so. And for vsync, the exact same thing. So to save some time, we can control C and control V that horizontal box, like so. And just rename the buttons to vsync underscore on and vsync underscore off. And let's uh, compile and save. Next, let's go to the event graph. And once inside, we want to go to the functions and create a new function. Let's call it is full screen on. So um, we'll drag out from the execution pin and do a get settings, get game user settings. And we want to see if the full screen's on. So we'll do get full screen mode. And with that, if we do an equals equals enum, we can check for which full screen we want. Now, full screen is the actual full screen. It just makes the multitasking a little bit harder. So most modern games use windowed full screen. So we'll check for that. We'll do a branch like so. And after that, we want to grab our buttons. So we have full screen on and full screen off. And we'll do update button status. So full screen's on, we'll grab the full screen on button, turn it on and vice versa. This will be set to false. So let's uh, control C, control V, all of this code and just reverse everything. So off and on. And let's compile and save. We want to now do the exact same thing for our vsync. So we'll do is vsync on. 
we'll do yep game user settings we'll do a is vsync enabled so vsync is vsync dirty it just checks it if it was pushed forward but not yet applied so we just want to do is vsync enabled a branch and with that the exact same thing so vsync on vsync off update oops update button status and plug it in oops and there you go control c everything control v and just reverse the effects false and true and we're done with this part so let's compile and save on the event graph we want to go to the pre-construct and we want to check for those values so we'll do this full screen on and is vsync on and just connect everything with the flow of execution just like so next let's go ahead and create a function called apply and save settings very simple we'll do get game user settings we'll do apply settings and we can do not check for command line overrides and at the very end we'll do a save settings so and we'll compile and save and finally we want to be able to press on our full screen buttons and our vc buttons so on the left hand side click on them and do unclicked for each and every single one and we'll do like so we want to create a function that will allow us to update the full screen and the vsync. So in functions, we'll create a new one called set full screen mode. And we'll do get game user settings. We'll do set full screen mode. And this enum here will drag to our input there, to our function to create an input. Um, then we want to apply and save everything. So drag your function in here. And at the very end, we want to update our full screen buttons. So we'll do is full screen on and like so. File and save. Now for the vsync buttons, we'll do the exact same thing. So plus and do set vsync mode. We'll do get game user settings we'll do two, 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 set vsync enabled and this option here drag into your input function and then we'll do apply and save settings and update our vsync button so is vsync on and let's compile and save Back inside of the event graph, we just want to call those functions now. So set full screen mode to be off for the button, so windowed. Control C, Control V, and we'll do windowed full screen. And for vsync, we'll do the same thing. Drag it out, vsync off, so that's false, and vsync on, so that's true. And let's compile and save. So all that's left to do is to test this. So let's close everything and let's change this to our standalone mode and hit play. Once the window is opened, let's go ahead and press G. Full screen's off, vsync's off. Now it's on and vsync's on. So this is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and if you did, leave a like. And as always, happy developing.